Cavalier got sweet revenge. Race United avoiding slip ups. And the Stars of the East upsets the West. But we start one place and one place only. And that's at Sabina Park when it was men versus boys. This is Match Week 2 Review Show. Yeah, people, welcome back to Jump Your Fun. And we are back again to look at Match Week 2. And despite it being a rainy affair in Jamaica, the football was scorching hot. But we will start in Sabina Park, where Craig Butler's Vera Phoenix United was back in town to take on Mullins United. Craig did mention after his heavy defeat in an opening day that they were without 14 first team players and looking at the starting lineup, majority of them could be back. Daniel will lead the line with McKenzie and Oilfield behind him and it was a special lookout for Wu Ling who finally get his debut in the JPL. While Mullin starting 11, it looked much the same a bit from last year and Jason Wright actually makes the starting 11 after you know, some rumours that he would not be making this game and there was a debut for Gary's different block in defence. So when the game started, it was what you expect from a Lions team actually, a very open affair. Both teams from the kickoff actually went for it very early. It was a bit more open than I expected from Vera Phoenix United, but they were definitely playing on the front foot and they were trying to get their passing rhythm going. But credit to more lines, I think they settled a bit faster and they were now trying to and they were trying to show they have the key experience as well as going forward. But despite the early possession of Mullines, they actually got their nose ahead. After some decent build up play, the ball found himself over on the right side and very overloaded that side and saw the Mullines defense dragging over to try to cover. But with that, it left especially a lot of space on the left wing, which was perfect for Oilfield, who was able to receive the ball, table itself, and then got off a nice sweet volley while got round the defender and passed the keeper on the back of the net. A fast start again for Veer, and they got the early goal they needed. But credit to most given to Mullines, they were definitely here to go on the attack and they basically responded almost immediately. From the corner kick, the ball was floated in, a good header out to the top of the D, the ball was placed off the chest of the attacker and he made a good shot through traffic and Adair did amazing to even see the ball coming through, get a good save onto the post but Jeremy Nelson was right there on the spot to pounce and you know all of a sudden it was one all. Definitely entertaining stuff. The game has settled a little bit after that as both teams were now trying to take a breather but before you know it, Vera was again in the lead. Again some good slick running down the right hand side by Daniel and then he got past his defender like it was nothing and was able to put it back at the top of the D for youngster number 10 Daniel McKenzie who made a great finish to pass the Mullins keeper into the back of the goal. Excuse the pun but it was Cavalier stuff by Vera Phoenix United who slick passing a movement up front bamboos the defenders of Mullins and was able to get their first half lead. Again Mullins was trying to get a quick response but this time Adair was not having it and you could see that the young keeper was having one of those games. So the half came with Vera holding a slim lead as 2-1. The second half came about and you think Vera would you know trying to preserve the lead a bit but again that's not how Butler or Hyde plays. They were again one of the front foot but they were now leaving a bit of gap at the back. Mullines was looking to exploit this, they were now the much better team on the ball and they were now moving the ball much quicker in transition as they were looking to find the equalizer. But they really should have, have done so here but just when they did a brilliant move to get the defender on his backside and now only have Adair in front of him on the goal but for some reason it is finished didn't come off and he messed it up terribly. A bad miss for the veteran who is normally a deadly marksman in those positions. It was a big letter for Veer but Mullins didn't take disappointed too long. They came again at Veer and this time Jason Wright was on the left side and he was able to roll the ball into the box for Wilson who once again came against the brick wall that was Adair in the goal to see Veer keeping their lead. Things were getting a bit frustrating for Mullins and now with the time ticking down they definitely was going gun ho and leave a lot of space in the back. The gambling they were hoping to pay off actually backfired as in the 90th minute Thomas raced away on goal although the defenders of Mullins got back to protect their goalkeeper Thomas took his time then give the keeper the snake eyes and then beat him at the near post. It was a good composed finish by the youngster and it was synonymous with the entire play of the Vera Phoenix United team throughout the game. 3-1 and with that the whistle came and it was a deserved first victory for Craig Butler back in the JPL. Alright but let's look us quickly look at the stats to tell you how this game went in numbers. In terms of total shots, Mullines outdid very Phoenix United. They had 19 total shots compared to 15 by very Phoenix United. But you can ask the former police Adams, shots without accuracy means nothing. 
as despite having 19 total shots, Malines only managed one on target in the entire game while Bear had six. Eight corners to Malines as they were pressing in the second half but could not convert any of those set pieces and four for Bear on the opposite side. Five offsides as Bear played a very high line and he caught off Malines most of the time. And it was one yellow card for Malines while it was two yellow cards for Bear. Yes, a good win for Bear Phoenix United. Um, they played their way and despite some nervous play at the back, they managed to get the desired three points that they needed. Well, my lines clear that they have some kinks to work out. It is their first game of the season. But again, my worry for them before the start of the season is that defense. And despite the newcomers, they still look like they have some issues to sort out there. But the season is early. That they have 38 more games to go. Let us see how they do in their second match. But anyway, again, the game finishes. My lines won. Very free United 3. We now turn our attention to the Portmore Derby, the first one of the season, as Race United was playing at home to the visitors Dumbo Holin. In terms of the lineup, Dumbo Holin didn't make much changes, and again, DeAndre Thomas will lead the line for the St. Catherine Club. In terms of Race United, the big move they made is that Javon Cole was now in the starting 11 and he will look to make a difference like he did at the end of the last game against Waterhouse. Prior to the game, it was raining cats and dogs, and of course, that hampered the field. But that was not stopping Race United to try to play this type of possession passing game they want to play. But it did take them a while to adjust to the new environment as they were a bit nervy at the start and would cause them to make some unforced errors at the back that allowed Dumboli to get in early on goal. But fortunately for Racing, Dumboli have not found their shooting boots just yet. The first five to six minutes, Dumboli were more the controller of the game as Racing again was trying to find their feet on the soggy field and while there were some scary moments for Holmes in goal, they would basically kept things in check and kept Dumboling out. And it worked out great for them because eventually they did find those feet on the field and they were now finally get to settle in and play their game. They were now pushing their line much higher and they were now occupying more space closer to the Dumboling box. At least again it was the man that was controlling proceedings in attack and was trying to unlock a very sturdy white wall of defense from Dumboling. But despite the lot of vigor and running by both teams, they were basically cancelling out each other. Dumbole was okay to watch racing, you know, pass the ball around sideways in front of their box, while they themselves was looking to count and go quickly down the opposite side. But again, racing did excellent in snuffing out any chances of that. But as the game ticked on, it seemed like racing was getting closer and closer. They find themselves again in the middle of the box and have a good speed of shot. And when the entire crowd thought the goal was scored, it was only managed to hit the side netting. But the fans could feel that the goal was coming. And after a good build-up play from the back, the ball was playing a left-hand wing. But you felt the defender should have done better. But a defensive mistake allowed the racing player into the box. was able to squirt across in front of the six-yard. And it was tucked away well by Malik Williams. One nil by racing. And you could say it came at a point in the game when they had sustained pressure. So many could say it was reserved. But again, credit to Dumbo Holland, they immediately tried to give up the game right after this. They went down the other end and tried to get an immediate response. But Holmes and the defense kept things locked. And that's how they remained for the first half. In the second half, it was an entirely different game. Dumbo Holland absolutely camped out in the race in his half. They brought their back line much higher and they were looking to press the initiative to try to get the equalizer. So much so that entire racing eventually won the ball in their own half. They were had issues coming out as every time they touched the ball, a white shot was there to try to take it back. It was now all hands on deck now for racing who was basically trying to defend for their lives as Dumbo Holding came at them time and time again to try to find the breakthrough. But there was a big chance here when Thomas was played in and with only Holmes to beat, he failed to do so. It was a massive reflex save again by Holmes who was the man of the match against Waterhouse and he was looking to do the same again here. But that's not to say that Dumbo Holy didn't have the chances. Holmes himself spilled a ball on the corner and all it needed was a light touch into the goal but somehow it went over the bar. So Dumbo Holy was definitely knocking on the door but this is where the likes of Romain Bowers especially shine in the game as he was able to rally his troops and snuff out anything that come into the box. And despite all that huff and puff by the Dumbo Holy team, they were not able to break down that racing brick house and race was able to come away for the first ever victory in the JPL. Alright guys, let's look at the stats for this one and see how the game was painted in numbers. Racing actually had more total shots overall when they had 5 compared to Dumbo in 4. 
The stats here is wrong. They were definitely even on shots and targets in, in my eyes, two apiece. And of course, Domoli in the second half was a lot of corners, but could not manage to get any by as they are nine compared to racing four. Only one yellow card was in the game and it went to Racing United. Sure, it wasn't the most attractive game out there as the field played a role, but Racing definitely grind out a result, a much needed victory, and it would bode well for them going into the rest of the season. While Dumbo Holding might be in a state of disarray, we did eventually get word later on Monday night that their head coach, Philip Williams, resigned after this game, so they are no lacking direction and we will be interested to see where they go from here. The final results read as Racing 1, Dumbo Holding 0. We now move on to Clarendon for another game that was a bit bogged down in terms of midfield play and that was Humble Lion taking on Tipoli Guns. Looking at the Humble Lion lineup, there was a debut for the likes of Harrison and Murray but all eyes would be on number 10 Clara Clark. While Tivoli was a most changed team of course and gone on the most of the regular starters at the back but the usual usual of Justin Dunn and Nathan Thomas remained in their starting lineup. So when the game kicked off, it was almost immediate that it seemed that Umberland was going to almost resolute in a defensive shape as they were looking to keep things tight at the back to not concede. Tivoli on the other hand started as they normally do under Jerome Waite, a lot of running, a lot of vigor and they were trying to create their early opening chances. This would be the theme for the majority of the game. They basically cancelled each other. And while Tivoli was trying to get things going, Ombudsman was resolute in their defense. Not to say they didn't want to give their home crowd something to cheer for. They was trying their best to get on the counter and get something going the opposite direction. And their attack was even hampered some further when they lost two minutes in his first half to injury. Clear Clark had to leave the game early and so did the Dr. Thomas who had to leave as well. But it didn't change much, honestly, as the first half ends 0 0. The second half, Homeland showed a bit more fight, but it was still all Tivoli in terms of going forward. But again, credit to the Homeland defense, they stood firm, nothing could pass them, and despite a few clear cut chances from Tivoli, they were not letting them through. There were some skills for them, Tivoli themselves, in the opposite direction, but again, there were nothing to cheer for for both teams in the end, and the game finished 0 0. So let us show you the stats quickly on how this one went. Homeland only had 7 total shots in the entire game compared to 18 by Tivoli as they were definitely the one pressing on the front foot. Homeland had 3 shots on target though compared to Tivoli 6. 7 corners for Homeland as they could not make one of those set pieces count. 8 for Tivoli as likewise they failed to make any of those count. 1 yellow card apiece. So yeah, uh, basically some probably would say what they expected from this kind of game. For that other one, Duke led Humble Lion and a Jerome Wade led Tivoli Gardens. Both teams definitely look like they're playing the first game of the season. And despite it all, I guess it's encouraging for Humble Lion that they were resolute in defense. As for Tivoli, they didn't manage to break through, but they could keep heart that they were the team on the front foot and will hopefully look to do better in their second game of the season. So once more, it ended Humble Lion 0, Tivoli Gardens 0. Okay, on to our next game, we are now moving out west as the Stars of the East travel all the way to Montego Bay United and the Monday Nighter. Montego Bay, of course, were buzzing after their big victory and opening day at Veer and largely kept an unchanged lineup for this one, while Harborview, despite losing to Chapter Maroons, basically brought back most of their players again for the last game. When kickoff arrived, Montego Bay United was definitely showing that they are the team with the most confidence as they were playing some silky smooth possession football and was trying to take the game to have view early. It definitely led to an early goal as some neat play in the ninth minute released Brian Brown on goal and he was able to chip the keeper and into the back of the net. Montego Bay's fast start was definitely deserved as they were definitely the one bossing things around. But yet out of nowhere they were able to concede. One of the few times other of you managed to find himself in Montego Bay's side of things and they were able to draw a penalty. Aguasa Strong, who was back at the club, managed to tuck the way to open up his account once more and to draw his team level with Montego Bay United. Mobe was not disturbed by this, they continued playing their football and they were coming again at half of you. Ways of attack was now coming the other way, but half of you will show something that they have not shown much last year and was resolute in the defense to see out the first half. The second half came and it wasn't much diff change in narrative. Mobe was playing quote unquote better, having more of the ball. But this time, half of you was deciding to break up their players much earlier up the field and had no problem drawing fouls around the edges of the box. 
he was a bit of a gamble and you could say it kind of worked in their favor but thanks to the linesman as Moby would end up have two goals disallowed from set pieces one was plucked for offside while the other which we believe was seen as offside but from this angle it seemed like it was a horrible call so maybe we can say it was a fall for you know the attacker climbing over the defender's back again it would be a soft call and having you basically got away not once but twice they didn't stop there foes were still coming around the box and the resulting free kicks were just not passing palmer and goal so Moby was definitely feeling the frustration while half of you must be delighted that their a plan is definitely working but even they must be surprised how they able to snatch victory away from the west Montego Bay end up did something they have not done much all night basically lazily played the ball out of their own half and the ball seemed to return back to them this time at the feet of Thompson who was able to dance past three or four red shirt cones and able to smoothly tuck the weight to give half of you a surprise 2 one lead late in the game they basically ride that out and eventually Mobe heard that dreadful whistle and it was the stars of the east who celebrate a massive upset in the land of the west all right let's look at the stats for this one quickly Montego Bay United had 13 shots overall as their dominance was different showing throughout the game but Overview managed with four and they managed to make those count Montego Bay only had four shots on target as I said to you Overview kept them at bay to long ranges most of the time or decided to fall them around the box while Overview only had one shot on target through the run of play and of course it was a match winner seven corners for Montego Bay and five for Harbour View three outsides for Mobe as Harbour View did well to keep them out and one outside in the opposite direction eight yellow cards people let me say this again eight yellow cards for Harbour View as I stated as the plan coming into the second half from Bujay Henry was clear as day do not allow any red shirt in that box fall them outside the box if you have to and one yellow card in return for Montego Bay United so yeah, an impressive, dogged victory for Harborview. One that Buja Henry should be delighted. Sure, it's not the silky smooth Harborview way of all. But when you're under pressure and on a long road trip, a doggy performance like this can go a long way. While Montego Bay United will be fuming. Those look like two perfectly good goals that was disallowed by the linesman. And they will believe that their play overall, they deserve way more out of this game. But those are the breaks in football and they just have to keep going again. They played well, but it was just not enough to overcome a dogged Harborview performance. Again, the game ended Montego Bay 1, Harborview 2. So to our final game and we return to Sabina Park where the defending champs was finally playing their first game against Pomer United. Cavaliers will be looking for some revenge after Portmore basically got the double over them with the back to back 1 0 victories. And for this game, as we mentioned in our preview, there was some rotation in the lineup. There was no busy Atkinson in that attack, but we get a good look on Kyrie Avery in his JPL debut. While Portmore United, the big change for them is that Romero Gucci was not in the game and he will be the key player they'll be hoping that can unlock that dogged Cavalier defense. But surprisingly, when the game kicked off, Cavalier didn't look at their usual selves. They were not sitting back and hoping to soak some pressure. They were not the ones on the back foot. And I must say, it's been a long time I see their back line being that high up the field. They were definitely trying to possess the ball more and pass the round with their midfielders and attackers basically switching positions, trying to confuse the power defense and move into spaces. It was definitely a new look and at points it seemed like it was working until it breaks down and it led to a turnover for Portmore going the other way and saw a neat ball slip in behind at the left hand side of their defense to see Zimenez run in on goal and with the angle tightening he managed to tuck away in the far corner and give Portmore a bit against the run of play 1-0 lead. Cavalier was not going to take that lightly though and again they were coming against a Portmore team that was trying to hold shape. Kylie average influence was now showing a bit more into the game. He received this ball near the Portmore box but after holding the ball for a decent amount he was able to play the ball out left which saw the ball now placed into the box and when the ball popped in the air it seemed that Portmore United's Mullins had it covered. But Calvin was also there and he did well to rock and roll the defender and able to power a beautiful volley on the half turn past Russell into the back of the net and gave Cavalier a deserved equalizer. Cavaliers were now rampant and they were now looking to get their second goal as quick as they can. 
But despite it all, Kovalev had their keeper Vina Barclay to the tank as again Zimnis was played on the right channel to repeat the same trick for the opening goal. But this time Barclay was out much quicker and was able to smother his shot out for safety. So one all it stood and the half time finally came. Second half though, Portmore started a bit brighter. They came with much more belief in their attack to take the game to Cavalier and for a while they had a sustained spell of pressure. Again, Barclay had to come up big to keep Cavalier level as Portmore was now pressing for a lead. But Cavalier eventually settled again into this new style they are playing as Jamal Cavan was now the main man up front who was carrying all the load. Again, this massive turn and swivel again with his left foot almost got it past Russell from far out but could not beat the bar. I was basically a sign of things to come. Cavalier has definitely taken over the game at this point, so much so that they saw their defender and captain Richard King not able to come closer and closer to Portmore's box and he even helped with the game winner. Atkins was playing in and goal on the right hand side in the box but unselfishly he looked for his captain who surprisingly was streaking in and goal and although he'd able to touch the ball towards the empty net, it wasn't enough as a defender was back on the line to try to clear it but unfortunately for the Portmore team and him, it actually managed to find Mullins and it went over the line. You could say that Cavalier deserved that but it was a bit of bad luck for Portmore and Mullins. 2-1 at this point and Portmore decided to make some changes. One of them is now bringing Zane Richards into the game and the man from Canada definitely made a difference. He was definitely a crazy spark on that left hand side as many as his captivating dribbling was able to push the back line a bit back of Cavalier and able to create space at the top of the D. One of those such plays happened here when he was able to play the ball back on top of the D for his teammates and while he managed to get his shot on target, it was too easy for Barclay in the Cavalier goal. But Portmore kept pressing though, they were trying their best to unlock that Cavalier defense and try to get a go ahead goal but eventually that led space at the back line and saw Cavalier again free as a bird racing on goal in the opposite direction. Normally he took these away but tonight on this wet surface, he managed to get his shot past the upright. So there were not to be no ice on the cake for Cavalier but it did enough as the final whistle eventually blew and they won the game 2-1. Alright, let's just quickly look at the stats for this one. Cavalier had 7 shots in total compared to Portmore 7 shots in total so they were even there. Despite this new attacking look to Cavalier, they only managed 2 shots on target while Portmore managed 3 where 2 of those came from the foot of Zimenez. 5 corners to Cavalier though compared to 0 from Portmore. One yellow card for Cavalier compared to two from Portmore. So yeah, a very interesting game in the end actually. A game where you could say Cavalier edged Portmore in performance, but Portmore definitely had their moments and spell in the game where you could say they were on top. Jimmy has managed to get a goal, but if you're a harsh critic, you could say he should have talked to you the second. While Cavalier should feel proud of themselves, after coming back from a tough match in the regional competition, they have managed not only to avoid defeat in the first game, but to actually win out. But alright guys, that's all I got here on this match week 2 review show. And so you can see again once more on the screen the results. And you can see the one that stands out the most. How we use big win in Montego Bay. But we are out of time on this review show. Please like, subscribe and share as we look to keep it going for the entire 39 rounds and the playoffs of the JPL this season. Otherwise for great JPL content, you're already at the right place. Jump your fan. YouTube, pick up yourself.